Okay, this, this is the Franklin motor, and this is the only one that had this nut on the end of the shaft. The rest of them use a small retaining clip and a washer. So this one, you have to remove the shivs a little bit differently, but the principle is the same. I use a board with a hole in it, and I use two clamps to do this by myself. In this case, I'm just untightening a nut on all the other motors we would use our clip pliers to uh, take off the small retaining clip. Okay, so you can see what I've done here. I've used the board to compress the spring. I'm using a pair of clamps to hold it down since I don't have a helper typically. So now with the pressure off I can very easily remove this nut. off. In this case there's nuts on the back. A lot of them have a screw head at the back. So usually four bolts to hold the case together. Okay, now I'm ready to separate the case. Every motor is a little bit different. And I'm going to do a whole video just on motors, but this will give you an idea of what you might get into. You might not want to mess with motors. There's so many inside parts. And this is soldered to the capacitor, so I'm going to have to remove this assembly here. The rear bearing is set in here. I have to use a special puller for that. The front bearing is attached to the shaft. Okay, so I got those pieces off. Now there's one final screw to retain the bearing in place. When you're taking motors apart, it's a good idea to take pictures of the order in case you're not sure how to get things back together right. So I'll be able to get that bearing out now. Now I just have to get the shaft out to be able to get to the front bearing. Okay, so here's the front part of the case. The bolts are still in place. There's two screws in this case that hold a plate that helps keep the bearing in place. So I'm going to have to release both of those screws. Some motors have this type of bracket and some don't. Okay, so now the shaft is free. Here's that spacer I was talking about. Still didn't want to come off. Uh, it'll come off when I press the bearing off. And that's the bracket that was holding the bearing at the back. So I'll be able to press this bearing off and replace it. 
pull the other one out and replace that. Okay, there's that internal bearing for the motor. This bearing is pressed slightly deep, and then you put that retaining screw back in place, and then pull the bearing back up to be uh, flush. That's the easiest way to deal with that. is just the opposite of how we took it apart. Setting the front bearing. Now we have to get that plate reattached. Lean it this way so that holds the holds the bearing in place. And this part will be the hardest part is getting the case back on. This is where the registration marks come in real handy. registration mark lined up. Now I have to get all of these components back in. down for the capacitor. This is the start relay. Wires back through the case.
push those long bolts back up through these holes. Make sure there's no gaps in the case. So we know the axle is held tight. 